Hey folks, doing another vlog, I guess. I uh, feel like I should almost name this something other than just Corey's vlog, but whatever. I wasn't going to do another one this shift because I did one at the start of the shift and that one, I think I got a lot out. I haven't had the urge to rant and rave since then until today <laughs> and it's not that I have something to rant about it's something that I guess I don't know is interesting it's something I noticed about myself and about my place of work and the people that I work around and probably a lot of people in Saskatchewan part of the reason that we talk, don't talk politics it seems is that we want to like people. <laughs> we want to get along well. And I, I know that often re radical ideas or uh, revolutionary ideas, ideas that are changing the status quo for the better of society, do not endear you to people. That's often why I think like this stuff on Facebook gets as rabid as it does because everybody's kind of giving up that facade of niceness that they hold in day to day life like just off the top of my head I'm, I'm talking to a guy today and I said something about uh keeping up with the news and how I have like 10 news apps on my phone and when I do that I can keep up with different kinds of news and from different parts of the world and each one often will say something different and have a different take and the headlines are always different and And I mean, and that's, I mean, that's how I, I go through my time. That's how I post stories to the Facebook page for the podcast and whatever. And as is customary in Saskatchewan, he brought up the, the election at the end of this year. And I think we're going to talk a little bit about the election uh, on the podcast on the live show on Friday so he brings up the idea that he hopes that we vote out Justin Trudeau and we get a new leader and I I went through a quick calculation in my head what is the risk to my livelihood if I just go along with this or versus what is the risk to my livelihood if I challenge this person by saying hey I'm actually voting for Trudeau in the next election and it occurred like so I did this quick calculation and I said, well, you know, I'm actually a pro-Trudeau guy. And I said, not that he actually does everything I want him to do. I mean, I'm way further left than the liberals are. Pardon me, I'm going to have some water. I said, I'm way further left than, the, than Trudeau is, and I'm way... and the liberals. But... I can't stand the conservatives. I had a vote at, for the lesser of two evils. I said, like, the, the my party of choice right now is the NDP. There are federal left-ish party. There is no leftist party in Saskatchewan. Like, even our NDPs are 
relatively conservative and they're 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 much closer to the center than I am. They're they're I guess they have to be to some degree. They're a, they're a political party. They're trying to appeal to the masses and people don't like change. So they I mean, whatever. I I'm, I'm derailing. <laughs> but in Canada, the NDP federally can never win. They don't have the power. They don't have the numbers. So, a person like myself, I vote for the liberals. It's a shitty first past the post system that makes no sense. And but it is what it is. I got to hedge my bets. I vote for the end or for the liberals. And I mean, I'm thinking all this, but I didn't say all this. I just said, you know, I would rather actually vote NDP, but I I I got to go with the lesser of two evils, and I got to vote for the party that isn't the conservatives. And I mean, it was a it was a, a nice exchange. We were both kind of like, yeah, he says, you know, they're, I guess in a sense, all politicians are kind of the same. And I mean, that's a line that I kind of can get on board with. I don't really believe that all politicians are the same, but I can say, hey, at least we can both agree that the conservative party and the liberal party probably don't have our best interests as working class human beings at heart. They just don't they just don't have it. They don't care as much as they should. They care about fucking donors and tax cuts for fucking companies that don't do anything with those that money. Uh, but I'm I'm ranting again. <clears throat> My point is this brought up the idea in my head, like, okay, so why did I have to do that calculation about not saying anything? Like, honestly, I should be able to say, express my viewpoint. The fact that it's a minority viewpoint out here in the fucking boonies of Saskatchewan doesn't mean I shouldn't say it, but I do. I, I'm often, I mean, I'm public. I'm online all the fucking time. My viewpoint is known to anybody who wants to Google me. And, but in a set, in the same sense, that's not, that's not the same as saying to your trucker friend or your other, you know, operators from other plants or whatever. Like, that's not the same as saying to somebody who works within my industry, hey, we should start a union. Saying that that could cost you your job. You can be blacklisted in this industry. It happened to a a truck driver I know. He complained about the wrong company online and he was banned from working on their sites. And... So that stuff can happen. You can lose your livelihood if you say something that a company doesn't like out here. And you got... And it makes me think of the way the right portrays this stuff. They worry about offending people by being racist. You know? (laughs) Or they they, they worry about offending people by being sexist. They think that... It's okay to be sexist or racist, and if you do it, but if you do it, then you'll get unjustly punished by society. When the reality is actually the flip of that. You can't be left of center. You can't be an actual leftist. You can't even be anti-racist without raising the ire of the people around you and potentially losing your livelihood. I have talked to a couple guys and I'm not I'm not saying that we talked about starting a union because we didn't. <laughs> 
But I mentioned that I'm generally pro-union. I didn't mention that I'm emphatically pro-union. But I did mention that I'm in general pro-union. And he he even said, like, well, you know, you gotta watch what you say there. Like you can't say that to the wrong person. If you if you mention that to the wrong guy, you will lose your job and you will not work in this industry again. And I mean it's not that I'm married to the industry. I don't actually feel like I'm doing an ethically okay job. But it pays well. And in the current system that we're in, I have to have enough money to support my family and my children and pay child support and, you know, pay for fuel. And you know, just living costs a lot of money. So that's where I'm at with that. And it just, it just made me think about all these people that complain about SJWs and how you can't be a conservative on university campuses, except you can, <laughs> and how people feel like they're unjustly attacked when the things that they're doing are actually harmful to society. But those of us who want to help society, who have environmental consciousness, who actually care about being anti-racist and anti-sexist and anti-bigotry, we could actually face repercussions for being public. Like, I could technically lose my job just for having the opinions that I have. And so I bite my tongue, even though I don't feel like I should have to. It's an interesting... It's like, I don't bite my tongue online. I don't bite my tongue for the podcast or on vlogs or on blog posts. I just, I put it out there and I just assume, I hope that it's not going to come back to bite me in the ass. Because part of my identity also is in the fact that I don't want to conform to this fear based on future jobs, you know, like I don't want to be like afraid to say things that matter or that are true just because I could lose my job or be, ha, deal with people having a bad opinion of me out in the workplace. I don't know. I'm rambling again. It's, it's just another one of these fucking things that happens out here that is the opposite in many ways of what people would have you believe is going on. I don't know. That's all I got, I guess, for today. I hope everybody has a good one. Uh, we're doing the live show, the live Brainstorm podcast on Friday. This is coming up on January 18th. We're going to be interviewing James Fell, uh, the blogger from Body for Wife, uh, about his new book, uh, which is The Holy Shit Moment, which is going to be super cool. He's a good guy. I like talking to him like online and stuff, and uh, I'm looking forward to the interview. I'm looking forward to learning about his perspective on his book. I'm about two chapters in. I'm a very slow reader, but... So far, it's a very interesting take on motivating oneself to do things. It's a kind of self-help book, but it's it's interesting. It seems very reasonable and evidence-based. So I'm looking forward to chatting with James, and I'm looking forward to being in the studio with the crew for the first time in since November. A month and a half, probably almost two months can't recall the exact date we did the the Jen Gunter interview but that's the last time we were in the studio together and hopefully 
you know, every, we're changing up the format a little bit, so hopefully everybody has fun with it and can do things that are, are interesting to them. And I don't have to be like the show boss. I can't, I don't want to be anybody's boss. I want to be an anarchist collective. <laughs> I want to be part of an anarchist collective where we all have a say and we all get the rewards when everything is done. That's what I want. I want my podcast to be an anarchist collective. <laughs> but I also... Yeah, I mean, everybody's got busy lives too, so it's tough to always do the work that I do and do, like, to share the work the same way. Like, everybody has different ne abilities and different needs. So... As you as, take that as you will. <laughs> um, I don't know what else to say. I'm going to have a treat with my daughter before I drive home, so that's going to be nice to see her again. She got uh, her cheer group, the Weyburn cheerleading group. They uh, they got first place and zero deductions, I guess, on their recent uh, competition trip. So that's super cool. My son is doing well in school. Like he's, uh, and he's doing well at his martial arts club or class, or I'm not sure what you call them, but, and I'll see him tonight before I go to bed. But yeah, I guess that's all I got. So have a good one, everybody, I guess. Make sure to hit like. What is all the, what's the rhetoric that one needs at the end of the video? Hit like, hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe and uh, yeah. And if you want to support us, go to patreon.com slash brainstorm podcast or patreon.com slash hardcore skeptic. Um, yeah. Have a good one.